Hello, it's me again, and today we're going to be talking about real world inequalities. Get it? World? I drew a globe. I'm a little sad to erase this. <sighs> the other day we talked about how inequalities are a way to compare two quantities. Well, today we're going to get into some real world examples. Ooh. So here's our first example. Marcy's pet weighs at least 18 pounds. We can rewrite this as an inequality, and I'm gonna show you how. Step number one is to choose your variable. In order to do this, we have to decide what don't we know. So let's look back at our original example. Marcy's pet weighs at least 18 pounds. So what don't we know here? Well, we don't know. We don't know the weight of the pet. So I'm gonna circle that and we're gonna call that our variable. That is what we don't know. We don't know how much Marcy's pet weighs. So I'm gonna call that W and saying that W is the weight of pet. So under where it says variable on your notes, you're gonna put a W because what we don't know is the pet's weight and we defined that as W. So W is our variable, it's our unknown value. You probably wanna make sure that you're also writing what W equals underneath that. So always define your variable. Don't just write W, say W equals weight of pet. Step two is to choose a sign. So to figure out the sign, we first have to find the key word in this problem. Marcy's pet weighs at least 18 pounds. At least is gonna be our key word. That is what we're comparing Marcy's pet to. At least is our key word. Just because we found the keyword doesn't mean we're done finding the sign. Now we have to determine, well, what sign needs to go with at least. So what I like to do is I like to plug in some fake values, a number below, a number that's equal to, and a number that's above to figure out which ones are the same. So I could do 17 compared to 18, 18 compared to 18, and 19 compared to 18, and figure out which ones are true. So is 17, at least 18 pounds. If I put 17 in for Marcy's pet's weight, is 17 at least 18? No. Is 18 at least 18? Yes, that one works, okay? And then is 19 pounds at least 18 pounds? Yes. So since greater than and equal to work, we're gonna replace the word at least with greater than or equal to. That's how we pick our sign. So now that we know our sign is greater than or equal to, the third step is to pick the number that you were given in the problem to kind of pull it all together. So looking at this example, the number we were given was 18. So our final step is just to write it all together. So we would write, so we would write as our answer, W is greater than or equal to 18. What this means is that Marcy's pet weighs at least 18. This would be the inequality that represents that real world situation. Okay, here's our next example. Of course we're gonna do some more examples. Okay, so here's your next example. Your team needs more than three points to win. I had to put to win down here because I'm working with a really tiny whiteboard, okay? But you gotta do what you gotta do to make it through this quarantine. So anyway, step number one, defining our variable, determining what our variable is gonna be. So what don't we know in this situation or what are we comparing? Well, we're comparing that the, the points that the team needs to win. So what we are going to call P is going to be points, P equals points to win. That is what we are trying to do. We are trying to win people. So P equals the points needed to win. So P is our variable. Step number one, done. Yes. This next part is the hardest part, but we can do it together. So now we need to determine what we don't know. Or no, we need to determine what we don't know. I'm losing it, people. Okay, what we need to do is figure out our keyword and our sign. So our keyword here is, these markers are really hard to get undone. Our keyword is more than. Team needs more than three points to win. So let's do what we did last time and compare. So we are comparing it to three points. Let's choose a number that's below it, a number that's equal to it, and a number that is above it, four. So is two more than three? 
No. So we know that less than is not an option. Is three more than three? Nope. So equal to is not an option. Is four more than three? Yes. Four is more than three. So greater than is going to be our sign. See how we did that? Last but not least, we got to find our number and we got to put it all together like a good old peanut butter and jelly sandwich. So, okay, our number is three, three, nice, and we're using the greater than symbol. So our final answer would be P, or the points needed to win, has to be greater than three. P is greater than three is our final answer. Yeah. This example is about money. Yay. Okay, you have at most $20 in your wallet. That's pretty good. Might as well have some cash on ya. Step number one, we're getting so good at this. To find our variable, figure out what our variable is. So our variable here is gonna be how much money you have. So M equals money you have. Okay, always good to define our variable, to say what M equals. So M is our variable, that's step number one. Step number two is to determine our keyword so that we can figure out our sign. At most is our keyword here. So let's do what we've been doing and write out some values. That one that's below, 19, 20, 20, 20, and 21, 20. Okay, is $19 at most 20? If you have 19, do you have at most 20? Yeah, so that one works. Is 20 at most 20? Yeah. At most 20, if I have 20, I don't have more than 20, so I'm good. 21 at most 20. That one would not work because 21 is bigger than 20 and at most means that this number has to be the biggest. So that means that our symbol or our sign is going to be less than or equal to. Last step now is to find our number and put it all together. So our number is 20. So our final answer is M is less than or equal to, why did I write 25? I'm really, I'm really losing it. M is less than or equal to 20, 20, not 25. Okay, last example. Students in 10th grade are younger than 17. Step one, define our variable. So our variable is going to be the age of students in 10th grade. So we could do A, let's do A. A equals age in 10th grade. Okay, that is our variable, age in 10th grade. Step number one, done. Variable is A. Okay, next step, step number two, is to find our keyword and then figure out our symbol. So keyword here, a little trickier, but the word younger than 17, younger. So we're comparing it to 17. So let's choose a number that's below, a number that's equal to 17, and a number that is greater than 17. So, is 16 younger than 17? Yes, 16, if you're 16, you are younger than 17. If you are 17, are you younger than 17? Nope, so that one won't work. And then if you are 18, are you younger than 17? No, so the only one that would work would be less than. So our final step, find our number. Our number here is 17. So our final answer would be A is less than 17. Students in 10th grade are younger than 17. Our inequality would be A is less than 17. Make sure that you're thinking about it and talking through it. Doing those examples of writing a number that's less than, equal to, and greater than really helps you conceptualize the problem. So make sure you're doing that. But besides that, I think you guys will be good. Let us know if you have questions. Bye.